authorities and down yeah. at district level? I mean, I, I went to our GIS office officer and said, I want a map of the borough and I want to see all the rivers on it and all of the flood defences. And when I click on a flood defence, I want a, um, a dialogue box to, to appear, <coughs> the same as an estate agent type thing. So there's a photo and there's That's a description exactly of the owner. I said. I said, I want it to look like Zoopilla. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So, so uh, we've got that on our website. Um, <coughs> Yeah, it's work. just the, the problems we're having is obviously what data we're allowed to look at internally and what data is then allowed to be published. Um, but it's just good to know that systems like that are up and running because that's yeah. what we need, but it's feeding everything from everywhere into it. Yeah. But it's live data, you say, so it's constantly updated. The, um, not the public, the public facing isn't um, live data. Um, the inputs from the maintenance team require our team to sit there and type in and, and been discussing with low low deg uh, the owners of flood station I, I, I want our maintenance team to have a tablet where they can just go and it goes straight to i, I don't want our technicians in there typing in information like that so that's yeah that's exactly what we think yeah. that's really interesting you're obviously one step ahead of us but it's nice to see it's working it back in. No, it does. It, it does work. It, it's yeah, it and it's not. Really it's not expensive. I think might be for Hampshire. <laughs> <laughs> I think Dorset County Council have got something that's fairly similar that also has uh, flood reports on it as well, mm -hmm. and that's got a public facing element, and that brings in all of the districts underneath mm -hmm. it. So it might be worth. So that's all yeah. incidents from your flood and water investigation teams, your highways teams, your emergency planning teams, everything that's doing all fits into that. Um, our remote, well, we're, we're the central point. We're, our drainage department is the uh, LLFA yeah. now. Um, so, yeah, we will, we'll bring in data and we'll put on what's relevant. Okay. Um, just to add to that, in Northamptonshire, we've got something called Street Doctor, um, which is a completely public-facing web-based system where you can track your calls as a, as a member of the public to see when your gully is going to get cleaned out or when the culvert's going to be jetted and you can see the public information we have there. And our engineers um, actually have handheld trimbles that they can plot issues and defects and inspection information on and that comes back into our system which is almost identical looking at it actually called Exor Bentley um, that um, is all real-time information so it's it prevents us having to go out like we used to with handheld plans and coming back and putting them on map info it's all done automatically you take a photo you've got the GPS <coughs> location you've straight away got a condition assessment and it just saves a massive amount of time I'm going to have some emails from you guys because that's what I've written in my bin. and everybody's still saying no, it's like that. I went off on sick leave, I asked for handheld devices for them, I came back and they sent me a new box of clipboards. <laughs> <laughs> that's really useful, thank you. Hashtag as for Brent Council, uh, Michael mentioned about the uh, gully cleaning uh, and the uh, gully asset that he does and all that. I mean, it's, it's all very fine that you know, you've got a nice system where you've got these handheld devices uh, showing you that uh, the contractor has been out there, cleaned the gully, you know, and it's pressed the button, and you've got the live information and all that. I think it's all based on the trust. If, you know, we, we have a contractor at the moment, and they, they are giving us those sort of information and saying that they've been out there, they've cleaned that gully, and this and that. We go out and check it, it's not done. So at the end of the day, it's got to be on the trust. You know, easy to press the button, mm. to meet your numbers, you know, meet your targets and your performances. But perhaps that's where the, the smart devices come in. No, so you know, the smart way. devices are the same thing. Because at the end of the day, smart devices, it does not really go sort of to your gully machine form. So it doesn't sort of say, right, the boom has gone in, it's removed so much silt level and all that. The device, the trimble and all the other devices, basically what it does, this gully machine is that this location is been out there, is completed the job, press the button, you got live information. End of the day, nothing has been done. Uh, I, 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 well, I know what you're saying. Um, the, I think the first um, starting point for us is to issue a tablet and get them to put live data in. We'll obviously be spot checking um, the contractor. Yeah. And they won't know, you know, I mean, you can, they're not going to be able to cheat that much um, as time goes by. And uh, <coughs> ideally, we'd like to get um, into a, a 
build a partnership with the contractor and the crews, you know, and not have an adversarial relationship with with, um, with our contractors. And I think that you you know you can build that partnership through these means this way. Our devices as well, obviously, are really good for things like grills and things because if you take a photo, the photo's got the date and the time that they took it and you can see the condition straight away. But we're also using our trim balls um, proactively as well. So where it's um, assets that are kind of riparian or not linked to the highway, uh, we actually have students over the summer holidays that take the trim balls out and walk the water courses and look at surface water assets and that all of that information is continuously adding on to the asset register as well. <coughs> yeah, I mean, those, those things are fine, so like the other videos or uh, grills or anything like that. Be, be careful with those things, but that's not a problem, because you get a grill full of covered up in debris and everything else. So you get before and after pictures. So that's, that's no excuse with that. It's a, it's a gully cleaning, which is a sort of like a cyclic gully cleaning. If you have a reactive gully, so right, you know, you've got a Block gully outside 50 High Street. That's fine. They'll go out there, take a before and after photograph, and say it's been cleaned. So it's not a problem with that. But the one they're supposed to be doing as a part of the gully cleaning program, they provide us with the grid references and everything else. <laughs> They've been out there, they capture the data, give us the information, but it's not correct. All of your presentations have actually mentioned about partnerships and working with other organisations. Bear in mind that we're now a month into the SUDS changes. How has your partnership have to evolve to help deliver some of the government SUDS proposals? I can ask everybody to answer that. That would, that would be good. Well, I don't know if I'll ask, we have a dedicated SUDS manager, which is not me, but um, I mean, we had a very good, we, we, we recruited into the role in preparation for becoming a SAB, so we've got three full-time officers plus our SUDS manager, so we were kind of geared up and we were already informally commenting on sites over a hectare anyway, um, so that relationship had been ongoing for at least sort of a year plus beforehand, but very quickly in the turnaround we had with the changes, we, we went out and visited all of our 12 districts and did some training looking at um, validation checklists and how we were going to get the information that we needed up front. Um, everything you'd, you'd want to try and do, it's just waiting to see whether it's going to be working in practice now, fingers crossed. We're the polar opposite, I think. We, we haven't set up anything um, in preparation for SUDS. Um, about two years ago, when the Flood and Water Management Act Schedule 3 was supposed to be coming in, we'd set up an entire virtual team, trained up a team of 25 staff, um, produ uh, produced some local guidance and things, but then it all just stopped because obviously the legis legislation stopped. So we basically implemented a whole new service area in four weeks. Um, created local guidance, set up um, pre-application charging systems, data request charging systems, um, seconded a uh, member of staff into the team from highways and we've been working really, really closely. Our local environment agency office have been fundamental um, because we've been going over three times a week for intense training with the environment agency and they're also providing a critical friend role for the next three months um, with a surgery type um, situation where we can take the applications to them to say this is our, this is going to be our response, is this similar to what information you would provide? And similar to Lucy, within four weeks we had to go around to all of the seven districts looking at local guidance and validation checklists and we've created some local planning authority guidance as well. I'd say we're probably somewhere in between. We, 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 we've got a, a, a SUDS officer we don't have a, a whole team, although we're looking at that now. Um, we, we set up the, the guidance and we've done a lot of training, but obviously we've been preparing for the SAB role for a long time, so we've got a well-established relationship with the districts. But I think that I see this as a potentially an opportunity for relationships to improve. Um, the, districts, the districts want um, lead local flood authority engagement in flood risk matters, local flood risk matters, and I think that now we're able to finally do it. Before we'd We'd only ever be able to do it in a very small handful of cases. Um, we couldn't because we didn't have a duty to and we weren't funded to. We're still not funded to, um, but we do now have a duty. Um, so, so hopefully um, a lot of, a lot of the, the requests, we get a lot of uh, 
members particularly, district members, county members, are asking us to get involved in uh, in cases, so hopefully it will. We're also looking at seconding some from the Environment Agency, which you know is always a good for, for partnership working as well, um, to help strengthen that. So I'm hoping it will actually um, help improve some of our partnerships. I think we were quite fortunate because ever since I've been at the council, we were already commenting on um, any developments that had flooding or surface water implications. So actually, in terms of processes, we haven't had to change very much. Over the last five years, I've just said that that has <coughs> become stronger and stronger, and we work more closely with development control. And I think that our comments have more weight now than they have had before. That isn't just since the implementation of, of the, the SUDS legislation. I've just said over the last year, year and a half, they really do take a lot more notice of what we're saying. I think as I mentioned in my presentation, our SUDS facilitation day really had a very positive impact on how we're working together. Um, but in terms of day-to-day -day processes, it hasn't changed because we were fortunate in already having that set up. Um, well, SUDS won't make any difference to, to us. We've got a team of six. I've got uh, one, in, one, in, one engineer and half a technician that uh, deal with every single planning application that comes in. So we provide a consultancy to um, two planners and uh, we set very robust conditions and that's why we've developed the um, published bylaws and uh, development management policies. Um, so they're, you know, they're, they're very busy doing that. Um, the team of six, we have a budget of about half a million pound of um, capital expenditure uh, and about the same again in revenue um, budgets to spend. And, uh, um, I, I think we're already, we've already been doing it for a long time. Um, I mentioned in, in the slide there that was, we went to court four times. Um, I think that was mid to late 1980s. Is that you enforcing the conditions? That was us going to court yeah. and enforcing yeah. the conditions that we wanted on particular development. So the tools have always been out there for a long time. Um, and I think perhaps it's a lack of resources that um, the councils haven't been able to um, um, deliver these things. And also the fragmentation of the water industry as well, where the privatisation, um, that sector took a lot of engineering experience from local councils. Um, so a lot of that has been lost and has to be recovered. I could just mention also that the partnership working, we, we think we're actively working with Thames 21 and um, Brent Catchment Partnership and the Crane Valley Partnership and we're putting some of our LLFA money into those organisations to establish um, community and stakeholder groups to, um, we think it's likely with the austerity um, looking towards getting the communities actively involved in maintaining some of the rivers and also um, working to establish some educational activities as well with, uh, with the local schools that are very close to some of the parks and so forth. So, Great, any more questions from the yeah, I've got a question on my name, uh, Mike White, I'm from Highways England. Um, quite, well, I'm very interested in partnership work because we've just been given a pile of money to, 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 to consider this, in particular around flooding, um, to be the roads investment strategy. But one of the things I'm grappling with is the benefits and the outcomes from partnership working, and I'd be interested if you've done any um, appraisal the cost benefit analysis, uh, natural capital, social capital on the, on the performance outcomes of partnership working and <coughs> some of the work that we've done. We haven't. I don't know about anyone else. I'd say the reality. I think that the reality at the moment is that we wouldn't get anything done without partnership working. Mm -hmm. So and that, that's probably the, the sort of nuts and bolts of it. Really, we wouldn't. We, as a lead local flood authority, we're kind of stuck in the middle. We've been given all the stuff no one else wants to do. Um, the water companies could have done some of it if they really cared, but they can say, well, that's not a sewer, so we're not interested. The environment agency kind of had a role, but they never really took it seriously because all the money was for coastal and fluvial. So we ended up basically, well, no one's dealing with this and it's becoming more of a problem. And so the pit review said, well, someone's got to do it. And after that, the government said, well, let's make it the lead local flood authority. So basically, we, the, the, the flooding we end up looking at has so 
generally, to, to resolve it, it costs a lot of money, but there's very few benefits. So the government doesn't give you a, very, a lot of money through FDGIA. Flood, that, that's the government's grant for flood defence um, uh, improvements. So without a partnership, we, we basically sat there writing a lot of reports and getting very little done. So basically, for us, certainly my experience is that partnerships are the way of getting things done. Um, and I don't really think we'd achieve a lot. We've, we've got a lot done because we've encouraged water companies to do it, because we've encouraged um, uh, local, uh, the local councils to do it, sometimes the parish invests in it, sometimes we get the environment agency to look at things. And that's, it's a way of, of bringing people together to realise what their sort of collective <coughs> benefits are. We haven't, we haven't done any, um, uh, any, any sort of um, analysis of it retrospectively to look at what the actual um, benefits are in any, in any sense. It would be interesting to do it, but um, it's not something that we've looked at. Obviously the entire flood defence grant in aid process is all based around partnership funding. Um, so I know yeah. there's been a hell of a lot of work done yeah. on partnership funding in terms of how many um, bids that have come through in the last two or three years that have actually secured partnership funding and what the percentage of that is and what the benefits are in terms of you know realisation. And I know that's also something that's being looked at as part of the review of the Flood and Water Management Act that DEFRA are currently undertaking at the moment. I think there's been some depth for R and D work on mm -hmm. benefits from flooding coastal uh, flooding coastal work. We're series also about to produce a toolbox uh, or tool kit, if you like, to evaluate the benefits around suds, picking up on those issues about partnership working that local authority might be interested in it for for their residents and their purposes, the water company might be as well. So the idea is to start looking at ecosystem services and natural capital with the 